There is great danger in holding authority figures in too much esteem. Just as with politicians, Catholic priests, and action heroes, science has its authorities, but science is not about hero worship. Instead, respective authorities in science are often individuals who had the power to make great breakthroughs in our understanding, not who were necessarily completely right, but often who forced us to change our pathway in a constructive way, in our unending quest for better understanding. For me growing up, Albert Einstein was always the definitive scientific authority. On one hand, he symbolizes Nobel genius, the crazy scientist, the classic original thinker. On the other hand, having fled anti-Jewish Germany in the 1930s, Einstein, as clearly as anyone in U.S. history, demonstrates the benefit of accepting diversity and tolerance. Scientific revolutions often come about when individuals address a problematic issue in a different light than others working on the same general problem. When science doesn't quite have something right, arguments have a way of entrenching themselves into a ditch from which few can find their way out of, or even want to for that matter. Einstein was different. He had the mind and experience to structure a change in thinking about some of the deepest questions of physics and of that place and time. So it should come as no surprise that all manner of thoughts and opinions of such a genius as Albert Einstein are the stuff of wonderment. Whether we want to admit it or not, I suspect that we all want to know how we measure up to one of the most brilliant minds of the last century. On the question, is there a God, Einstein was, well, Einstein. As someone who has a fairly good grasp on the nature of the universe, you'd think he may have had at least the hint of an answer. And indeed he did. But his beliefs were rarely understood because they were hard to bend. Because of that, it was with great excitement that details from a letter from Einstein were recently revealed in which he describes his beliefs one year before his 1955 death. Einstein wrote, The word God is for me nothing more than the expression and product of human weaknesses. The Bible, a collection of honorable, but still primitive legends, which are nevertheless pretty childish. No interpretation, no matter how subtle, can, for me, change this. These subtleized interpretations are highly manifold according to their nature and have almost nothing to do with the original text. For me, the Jewish religion, like all other religions, is an incarnation of the most childish superstitions. This excerpt makes it quite clear what Einstein thought about religion at the end of his life. But what may surprise some is how more ambivalent about God he was at other times. It is clear that he discounted all notions of a personal God, one who knows you and cares about you. In correspondence from 1950, Einstein wrote, quote, My position concerning God is that of an agnostic. I am convinced that a vivid consciousness of the primary importance of moral principles for the betterment and ennoblement of life does not need the idea of a lawgiver, especially a lawgiver who works on the basis of reward and punishment. Einstein also stated, I have repeatedly said that in my opinion the idea of a personal God is a childlike one. You may call me an agnostic, but I do not share the crusading spirit of the professional atheist whose fervor is mostly due to a painful act of liberation from the fetters of religious indoctrination received in youth. If something is in me which can be called religious, then it is the unbounded admiration for the structure of the world so far as our science can reveal it. Although Einstein softly claimed agnosticism, I suspect that had he lived today he would not use that word, but have, like many of us, still been wordless to describe the nature of our non-beliefs. Valued words worth embracing are affirming and stand alone. They are not invented to spite the other.